and I believe we have NTD's Iris Tao, who is on site where the Teamsters Union, Sean O'Brien, just gave a pretty powerful speech uh, in front of former President Trump. Iris, what can you tell us? Great pleasure to be here. Good evening to all. So that was Good unprecedented. Pleasure. This is the first time in history that a Teamster Union's president has spoken at a Republican national convention. The president by himself said this is unprecedented. So standing right next to me, her name is Phyllis, and she works for uh, the Carpenters Union. And so first of all, tell us, what do you think about that speech just now? What it means when it comes to a shift in politics? Well, I think uh, uh, what, whatever he said was very good. It's very good for the people, the workers. It wasn't like that years ago. It was like, well, I'm retired a long time now. But we were told who to vote for. Uh, uh, men always made a heck of a lot more money than the women. It wasn't like that fair. But I did work there because the, the pension, we got a very good pension, and the, the money was, you know, it, it was there, it was steady, so uh, I, whatever, I worked there 30 years, so I guess I, I, I did enjoy it. Oh, Mr. O'Brien was talking about cooperation across two parties to help union workers. What specific steps do you think can be done to do that? Well, people, you know, I think that we, as individuals, we have to do, we have to vote the way we want to, you know. I, I don't add it to you. And as a union, you know, as someone who works for the union, what are the top priorities you think are for union workers in this country? You get a very good pension. See, I told you I worked years ago, not today, but we got a very good pension, we got vacations, we, everybody got along with one another. I mean, I wasn't uh, a boss, so uh, I don't know, but I, I enjoyed working here. I didn't see a path forward for the Republican Party to get union votes in this election. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, yes, I think a lot of people think are going to change because, yes, because it's going to be much better. Phyllis, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so right now we're at this convention with more speeches to come tonight, and we'll keep you all updated. Question with that uh, nice woman, uh, Phyllis, who was a former union worker. One thing that sort of struck me um, that she said was that we were told who to vote for. And, um, you know, I've actually been uh, privy or present at a union meeting when I uh, did some volunteer work in the past. I was asked to give a, uh, a speech. And before that, I was able to listen to some of their meetings and the union boss was there. And he was pretty much telling them who to vote for. Um, really fascinating that the president of the Teamsters Union would address the RNC. I think it is. And this, <clears throat> this woman, uh, she's uh, got a lot of history behind her. She really sees the reality of what happened in the past. She was right. The union bosses, uh, the shop stewards. I mean, it was a, a it was a political enterprise. You know, here vote for, vote for one person. <laughs> so, but she it really gave the American people tonight on this broadcast a lesson about how the past was and how the unions are now. And to see the president of the union up there, notice he didn't endorse anybody. He was just up there saying, "Hey, look, if this is the reality of life, and this is the way that we are working now, and you make the decision." Right now, we're just going to go back into the uh, the feed at the RNC where we have Harmy Dillon uh, addressing the crowd. All right, well, it seems there's a prayer happening right now, but we are going to bring it back in studio here. Lieutenant, I want to go back to a previous topic, J.D. Vance, the Ohio senator who is now Trump's or former President Trump's pick for vice president. We did hear Robert Petillo earlier going on about Vance's history, how he was a self-described never Trumper. He said some pretty nasty things about the former president. But looking into his history here, Vance changed that stance when he met Trump in 2021. He's also said before he's described the former President Trump as, quote, one of the few political leaders in America that recognizes the frustration that exists in large parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, eastern Kentucky, and more. And he's now 
become a huge champion of Trump's populist anti-elite political movement and with him becoming the vice president pick tonight, how do you see potentially that shift also happening in Americans? If someone like this, who, you know, self-described never Trumper can become the VP pick. Well, he who has not sinned cast the first stone, right? I, in politics, have said things about of my opponents and later on became ardent supporters of them. And the, to answer your question directly, the reason why that happens is you think, you think, what's more important, your politics or your country? And I think J.D. Vance, after speaking to Trump, realized that this is bigger than me. This is for the United States of America. This is an effort to bring the country together. And to J.D. Vance's credit, he made that decision. Let's do this together. And Dave, we do have Dave Martin here with us. I know you've done a lot of research into the short list of VP picks. J.D. Vance was part of that. Tell us what you found. And, you know, was this surprising to you tonight? You know, when I was researching all these VP picks, of course, I found a number of them actually had sparred, of course, with Trump in the past. And like Robert Patillo said, yeah, J.D. Vance did too. And that wasn't when they were both going for the presidential nominee. Now, obviously, uh, it seems like Trump is on very good terms now with Marco Rubio and Nikki Haley. Obviously, uh, J.D. Vance. Uh, and we also saw tonight maybe a little bit different looking Trump. Like, he, he does seem a little bit more mellow tonight. Maybe that pre-recorded message wasn't so much. It really makes me interested to kind of hear his new, his reworked speech on Thursday night and see how, how that unify is going to come into that speech. Or maybe he'll still be very mellow about that. It would be kind of interesting to see. On that note, we are hearing Michael Watley, the RNC chair, talking about former president right now. Let's see if we can tune into that. The chair declares that the 2024 Republican National Convention stand in recess until tomorrow at 5 p.m. And there you have it, the RNC chair, Michael Watley, gaveling out for the evening, uh, concluding this evening's RNC convention uh, activities and speeches. Uh, a lot to take in, a lot to process there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I guess, you know, your, your thoughts on the evening, uh, Lieutenant, how do, how do you think it went? And um, do you think that this was a good night for the Republicans? Uh, outstanding night for the Republicans. I mean, they really had a theme of unity. There was a lot of peace. There was uh, uh, inspirational moments. And a really great start for you guys. And, I, and I'm going to let you know, I said off camera, what, I'm impressed. I mean, you got that, I keep on staring at that, that, that thing you got back there. The nation decides, but you help America. You help them uh, decide. You help them by educating them and by showing them what you show them tonight. I'm sure there'll be more, more news in the future, but you're the, one of the very few, if not the only one network that's talking about America deciding and not the media. Well, we do appreciate your kind words. I mean, I can tell everybody at the table and our audience that we do take pride in how we cover politics, and we surely um, do not want to tell people how to think. We want to give everybody both sides, and uh, we're more than willing to have both sides on, uh, as long as it's respectful and civil discourse, which uh, for the most part tonight it was, and we appreciate uh, your perspective and, and keeping the tone and tenor that way. Well, thank you. Of course, we do have NTD's Dave Martin here with us. He was breaking down some numbers and polls for us. Do you have any last thoughts? You know, I, I didn't finish that thought that you had asked me earlier. We were talking about, you know, what the latest with Trump, obviously the assassination attempt, the illegal docs case dismissed this morning. 
how is this i'm sorry classified dogs thank you very much how will this affect the polls it's been a very close year between him and biden really you know the month after the state of the union address uh biden cut the lead from two points to one point of course across these major polls then you got trump's uh felony conviction biden actually went in the lead in the national average uh, but after the CNN debate, Trump was back up three points. I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens immediately after events in the last two days. Very good points indeed. And let's now go check in with NTD's Iris Chow, who is on the ground at the RNC. Iris, what do you have for us now? So right now we are at the very end of the day one of Republican National Commission right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The crowds are all leaving. And as we just saw, actually, Trump and his VP choice, Senator uh, J.D. Vance, were just leaving that family box far away from the stage right there as well. And actually, right next to Trump, we also saw the Republican Congressman Byron Donalds, as well as former Fox host Tucker Carlson, an interesting sight there at that family box as all of, both of, all of them were watching the later part of this convention today. And meanwhile, today we did hear from a variety of speakers. Just now we have the president of the Teamsters, which is unprecedented at a Republican National Convention, also from different groups, from different walks of life. And that is the day one of this Republican National Convention, where Trump and J.D. Vance got enough delegates to be the nominee for the Republican ticket. And now they're going to formally accept their nomination. And two days later, on Thursday, and that's when former President Trump will not only be here to watch, but also come out to give a speech accepting his nomination. So a lot to watch for the coming two days. But today, the biggest suspense is finally settled as we know that J.D. Vance has become Trump's VP pick. So a very dramatic day as we, of course, thought about different candidates, different possibilities. And finally, that announcement came today on day one of the Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee with more to come in the next few days. Back to you. All right, Iris.